Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It's time for Tarascopes again. We're going to be doing the Tarascopes for the sign of Sag, Sagittarius. Sagittarius sun, moon rising for the month of September. Before we get into all that, I want to uh, welcome my new subscribers. Welcome to this wonderful community of like-minded souls, people who are seeking and searching for answers and will a willingness to roll up your sleeves and do the work that's needed to bring us into this new age, this new time of power for the people and the, the necessity of love and connection. Uh, I also want to thank my tried and true who have been with me for years. I want you to know how much I love and appreciate you guys. Uh, it's been a, it's been a long, strange trip, and uh, hopefully we can spend many more many much more time uh, together uh, navigating this uh, rather interesting time on planet Earth. So let's get to um, Sag. I want to talk a little astrology first. So Sagittarius is a sign that is ruled by uh, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, the planet of intuition, the planet of the big picture. And Jupiter right now is in the sign of Gemini. In fact, last month, uh, we had a conjunction of Jupiter and uh, Mars, uh, sort of activating that Jupiter uh, in Gemini. Jupiter moved into Gemini, I believe it was in July. And uh Gemini, as you uh, probably are aware, is your opposite sign. And so we have your planet that rules you in the sign that's opposite you. And what this does is expands your relationships. It also expands your ability to uh, converse. Now, Sagittarius sometimes likes to um, sort of sit with its own knowledge and ponder the great questions and doesn't always like questions. Uh, but we're questioning and we're communicating. And so even if you are the most likely to be the Sag who likes to sit at the top of the mountain, it's time to come down to the common folk and start talking about what you know and what you understand. And we'll see an expansion of that. Your, uh, your influence in a way is increased. Now, I also want to talk about a couple of things that are happening uh, that are affecting everybody, but we can talk about how they, well, I want to talk about that. So first thing, first thing to happen in September is that Uranus, the planet of awakening stations retrograde. Now Uranus has been moving forward through Taurus, creating all kinds of havoc. Um, we remember that in uh, July, we had Uranus conjoin uh, Mars and Caput Algo, and that was right around the time that um, one of the presidential nominees was, uh, there was an assassination attempt on him and the other one ended up stepping down and sort of passing the torch to his vice president. Um, and so there was a lot of activity, a lot of action, you know, Uranus is like that. It's like, we don't expect it. And suddenly something happens and we're astounded and we're like, oh my God, that just happened. I can't believe that happened. That's what you usually say when Uranus is, is active. Uh, now that Uranus is uh, stationing retrograde. And when we talk about planets, you know, stationing or standing still or moving backwards or moving forward, planets are always going in their orbit in one direction. It's just from our perception on planet Earth that we see them moving backwards. It has to do with the fact that the Earth moves much faster around the sun than Uranus does. And so we have months and months when Uranus seems to be moving backwards in the sky. But what that does for us on planet Earth is it gives us an opportunity to look within. And so a lot of the illuminations that will happen as Uranus moves retrograde through uh, areas of the zodiac that has already passed once, uh, we will have internal illuminations. So the illuminations continue, but it's more, I think it's going to seem to be more like aha moments for us. And so we'll see how that works because Uranus, you never quite know. And Uranus, you know, is going to be doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, between now and the next time it moves forward. So we'll have to, uh, not, and we also um, have a, uh, we're starting to get into a trine with Uranus and Pluto. 
And they're both transformational energies and trines are flowing aspects. So change is going to happen very, very quickly and with little resistance or little to no resistance. So we can expect uh, that sort of happening now because the other thing I wanted to talk about was Pluto uh, moving back into um, Capricorn. Pluto is going to spend... Uh, September, October, and until the 20th of November in the sign of Capricorn. It uh, is moving retrograde, retrograde uh, out of Aquarius back into Capricorn. And then in, in uh, October, it stations and then starts to move forward. And then by the 20th of November, Joe Biden's birthday, incidentally, uh, it moves out of Capricorn for good, we'll say, because it's not going to be in Capricorn for another 230 odd years so we're not going to be here to see it it'll happen but we won't be witnessing it at least not in this body in these bodies that we have uh but um yeah so the the time of the the power of the plutocrat the time of um you know top down power uh is is on its way out this is kind of uh the plutocrat's last stand we'll see how that manifests for us but we are moving in a more collect into a more collective future. There's many things besides the fact that, you know, including, I should say, not besides, including the fact that Pluto will go back into Aquarius, where it's going to spend about 19 more years. So we have a lot of time to figure that out and a lot of time to work through that energy. But know that we're at the end of an era here. And uh, this is just this month starts the beginning of the end for that particular era. Uh, so that's general. We also have a, a new moon in Virgo and uh, Virgo for you, Sag, is your um, your 10th house. So you could have a new job comes in or just a new, uh, new energy around how you're seen. Um, Virgo, of course, is very um, exacting and uh, is, is a very hard worker. So there's going to be a lot of energy. And quite a bit of work for you if you if you decide to accept the the mission as it were, and uh, and then we also have a, a full moon in Pisces. Pisces is your uh, fourth house, and of course the sun will be in 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 um, Virgo in with that uh, full moon in Pisces, and so we're looking at the axis of security for you, the tenth house and the fourth house, and it's an eclipse, and it's an eclipse. So. Eclipses also bring a lot of change. This particular eclipse is actually in a in a supportive relationship to Uranus, um, and really a supportive re a relationship to Pluto as well. So illumination around the eclipse, and then and then uh, we can you can things will happen. I think rather quickly, and and you'll perhaps find yourself in a different different place by the end of this month so but we'll look at the cards and we'll see what they have to say uh also the sun moves into libra if you happen to live in the northern hemisphere like i do it means it's the beginning of fall if you're in the southern hemisphere it's the beginning of spring and i know you guys are looking forward to that it's been very cold down there uh from what i can tell watching uh lena and marianne and ellie down under and uh magistar uh tarot it seems like it's been pretty damn cold down here so uh the warmth is coming to you guys and we're cooling down which i'm happy about but you know that's that's not here nor there for sag that's me all right let's take a look i'm going to be using the arcanum deck for this reading and i have a new tree of life oracle that i'm going to pull an oracle card for sag so let's see uh what the energy is for Sagittarius for the month of September. And uh, just take me a minute here. These are pretty well shuffled. Let me just give it a nice feel. The energy is moving in the deck. Boy, what a summer, huh? Or winter, I guess, if you're down under, but yikes. I know you, you folks down under are watching us going, oh, goodness gracious. I know, right? Cray, cray. All right.
I think one more. Feeling good, feeling good. Hmm. All right. Sorry, I want to just tap these. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to do it on the computer because I thought I'd shut myself off. All right. We start with the five of pentacles. Some of you may feel like you're at a loss right now. This could be um this could be this could be um finances, but it could be um your physical self. I think some of you are feeling exhausted. Um and 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 a little bit sort of down, um, either feeling not as uh, vivacious as as Sag is used to being, um, and perhaps some of you are feeling at a loss, or this could just be a change in circumstance. Five is about change, and it doesn't always mean. Uh, it actually doesn't always mean uh, from good to bad. Oftentimes it means from bad to good. This is, uh, my, my teacher calls this the miracle vibration. This uh, in the system I use, the 73-1 is the miracle vibration and that you can go from rags to riches. In fact, this vibration is Kamala Harris's expression vibration in numerology. And she really has gone from, you know, running for president in, uh, what was that, 2020 and then stepping out and then becoming vice president, which was sort of like a ooh, and then now running for president, and things are really taking off. Uh, it's 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 a it's it a, it, a it's a little simplifying it a little bit to call it a rags to riches story, honestly. But there is that energy, and the challenge is how do you balance? How do you balance? How do you balance your physical health? How do you balance your financial health in these tumultuous and emotional times? Let's see, at the root, we have uh, friends. That's how you do it. The four of wands. This is celebration. Celebration. I think, well, let's continue. I don't know. Let me see what else comes up. So there are people there to support you if if you allow them to. Sag, uh, Sag likes his freedom. I'll say that. They don't like to be tied down necessarily, but sometimes you need a good friend. I got a friend in you. We have the queen of pentacles in the past. I think you're just used to being in a better situation. Um, I think you feel like you manage your, your, your finances and your health pretty well. Um, and so this, this dip, I think is, is, is causing you some consternation. In the sky, we have conflict. There's conflict, there's pushing and pulling. This can be partisanship. Or this could just be the conflict we see in the world around us. Sagittarius really cares about the world. And so with all this tumultuousness, with the wars that are going on, the suffering that we're seeing, it's hard on somebody who has a broad perspective on the world. Yeah, you're dealing with some emotional stuff here. I have to say, you're, the root of this is that you have support. So that's the good news, but you do have some, um, some emotional, um, I, you know what? Okay. Let me continue. I'll, I'll tell you what I think. How, how others see you, uh, the queen of swords, um, no, um, uh, no fooling. This is no fool. And somebody who stands up for justice, for truth, uh, somebody who's not, afraid to point things out when it's necessary, sometimes with a, with a sword, sometimes with um, a pen, and sometimes with their own tongue, right? Like you say something. I mean, Sagittarius is famous for, you know, saying something and somebody taking it all the wrong way and it wasn't meant that way with Sag, right? See your domestic situation. Oh, we have victory. Okay. So... Okay, let's continue. Victory, that's good. That's good. That's good news. So home environment or your domestic environment or where you spend most of your time, there seems to be some support and some victory there. That's good. <clears throat> Hopes and fears, uh, happiness. I'm sure it's not a fear. I'm sure it's a hope. And the outcome. Oh, good news coming. 
So there is some good news coming. Let's see if we can extrapolate on that. Uh, your due diligence with your finances is paying off. I feel like whatever you're experiencing now is temporary, is temporary and that things are going to get better because you've been careful and you've done your due diligence with that. There is somebody who's a, a bit of a troublemaker. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. The nine of cups. This is getting your wishes. All right. Let's see what's underneath this. King of Swords. Four of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles. You're, um... So what I think is this isn't about money right now for you. Uh, because underneath it all, um, you're... you're you're righteous, you're frugal, you work hard, you, you do everything you need to do for yourself. I think you're just feeling not up to snuff. I think you're just feeling, I, I don't think it's financial. I think it's physical. I think you're having some physical problems. And I want to say part of the reason is because you have to find a way to work to to observe the world without letting the world pull you down without letting the world define how you feel if that makes sense to you let's see what the uh, oracle says i want you to take care of yourself sag I mean, it's important to be informed and the and the re and the rest. But if you need rest, you need to take it. And everybody will still be there after your little vacation. You need to find a little. I think maybe yoga would help if you're so inclined. And if you're you you're like I ain't getting on the floor and doing that. There's chair yoga. I mean, she's in the tree pose. She's actually in the tree pose here and balancing so if you're feeling ill the problem is you're not balancing you're not balancing work and pleasure fun and and you know you you have to find more balance that's what this says and your friends are there to help you so don't be surprised if one of your friends like you know how your friends are like she's working too hard and then they come and get you and take you for a spa day i kind of like that i think i think uh we should talk to your friends about that I get the pillar of mercy, the pillar of mercy, uh, grace, peace, and love. This is about support. You see, there's a, this being here has a has a um, a shield. So this is this is both a warning and a promise. Uh, warning that you need to protect yourself a little better. I think that, but I think what they mean is your energy. You can't be as absorptive of the the problems in the world. Very difficult to, not to get. Um, dragged down by that but it's also a promise that your guides and not just your guides but your friends are here to support you and help you so uh, you may not be good at asking for help um so you don't have to say it if you just like go like this we'll know you have that you need help <laughs> we'll come and help you <laughs> oh wow we have the planets, the, the pillar of, of mercy is Uranus, Jupiter, and Venus. Uranus this month, of course, is going uh, retrograde. Jupiter in, in, um, in your opposite sign there, um, increasing information. And then Venus this month um, starts the month in Libra and then moves into Scorpio. Again, uh, uh, Libra and Scorpio are two of the um, signs that are associated with relating to others. And so I think you need to unburden yourself, stop taking it on all yourself, ask for the help that you need, and you will get it. And uh, we love you. So don't do anything. Um, do what's best for you. We understand. 
All right. All right. Take care of yourself, please, Sag. All right. Um, have yourself a restful month. Do what you need to do for yourself. Put on that oxygen mask first. If you're, if you know a Sag who's been working too hard or seems a little down or seems a little drained, go take them to the spa. Have them get a foot rub or a massage or sit in one of those salt places and give them uh, and, and, and help them. And if this is you, um, do that for yourself or just say to somebody, you know what a good massage therapist? Do you know a good this? Do you know a good that? I, ooh, I would love a spa day. Right? Ask and you shall receive. All right, guys, have a wonderful month. Um, much love to you. If you are interested in taking a introduction to the Kabbalah class with me, I am going to be offering that in September. Uh, it's going to start at the third week of September on a Thursday. And it's a six-week course. It goes on consecutive Thursdays. Everything is recorded. So if you can't make all the classes, you will get all the classes. And it's really a sort of nuts and bolts of the tree of life. And then after that, I get into a little bit about how I work with the tree of life. And then I have another six week course uh, where we deal with um, uh, how how the, the system that I use with the tree of life. And most people who take it really enjoy it. It's a real, uh, it's really a gift to yourself. And uh, the gift that keeps on giving is self-knowledge. And it's a great tool for that. All right, guys, I'll see you again next month. Take care of yourselves, especially you, Sanj. Much love. Namaste.